Welcome inside the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open press room. We are here with uh, 2021 AIG Women's Open champion Anna Nordquist. Anna played Evian last week, solid showing, T22. Um, how are you adjusting to the Lynx conditions and get, get your brain ready for some more Lynx golf? Uh, I love Scotland and I love coming back here. Um, having a Scottish husband and a, a Scottish caddy certainly helps with it. Um, but there's just something about the atmosphere here. I love coming back here and playing. Um, it's nice to get some fresh air and a little bit cooler temperatures than we've had the last couple of months. Um, but Link, Link's Golf is different and you get to adjust a little bit to the wind and the balances and stuff like that. But I think there's just something about it that I just really love. You just walked off the golf course here at the Donald Links. What did you think of the, uh, the conditions in the course? Uh, the course is in really good shape. Um, I said to my caddy, the more you play the course, the more you kind of figure it out. Um, I wasn't here in 2017 um, when we were here before. Um, so just played it for the first time yesterday and today. Um, but yeah, just figuring out some of the lines of the tees. And um, it's, um, I mean, it's tough greens. A lot of slope like runoffs and a lot of slopes on the greens and you know depending on the wind uh the matter some of them might play really tough but i think it's a fair test and i'm looking forward to the challenge this week you played um i was just like I said played every on last week also slopey greens but the grass types are a little bit different there's a lot of poa in those greens is it nice to come out here and see some true rolls yeah i mean uh, i just didn't hold anything all week last week so it was kind of nice to get away from those greens uh hopefully my putting is a little bit better than it was last week but um I mean, in general, like you have the wind and uh, I feel like they're rolling really good. Um, my pro players say they were really fast. So um, it's just nice to see that, that they're rolling well. Um, obviously, you have to make some adjustments in your game, learn, you know, get those little bit of lower shots as bump and runs. What do you specifically work on to prep, uh, prepare yourself for that? So? Well, I think it's just trying to figure out the lines of the tees and depending on the wind, uh, what might change, where you can miss it and, you know, where you're going to put yourself. And, um, you know, if you miss miss it on the wrong side of the greens, you can have a really tough shot. So just trying to, to figure out what the golf course looks like. Um, and then depending on the wind, you kind of have to adjust as you go. Um, but yeah, just coming up with a good game plan as far as if you want to, where you want to be in relation to the pin and, you know, some of the lines off the tees to, to avoid some of the bunkers because there's quite a few in play. So yeah, I just, just tried to, to find, um, you know, the best game plan for my game. Um, anybody questions in the room? All right. Um, anybody? Oh, yeah. This is a big event, but how difficult is it not to think about next week and, and your title defense and your use factor as well? Yeah, I think uh, obviously coming back to Scotland and I played Kurt Neusti about two weeks ago, um, brought back a lot of good memories and, you know, there's obviously I'm excited about going into next week as a defending champion and uh, it's just such like it's probably the greatest honor of, you know, being a European golfer and having that trophy to my name. Um, you know, I think about it, but I never played in your field before, so I don't really know what to expect next week. Um, and I never obviously played this course, um, but I think just, you know, enjoying being back in Scotland and, and playing Lynx golf and, you know, soaking it all in. Uh, I'm pretty good at staying in the moment. So um, certainly, you know, wanting to play here this week, uh, gearing up to the British next week. But um, yeah, it's it's two two of the most fun weeks all year. Uh, this one and the next. So Kevin spoke to you about your field, just about the history and what a big golf course it is. A little bit. I think he's played it maybe once. Uh, my caddy has not played it, even though he's from Aberdeen. Um, but yeah, obviously, he's just heard bits and pieces. But I think he's always always different depending on, you know, someone who hits it a little bit offline might think it's very narrow or very wide, you know, so I'm looking forward to see it for myself on Monday. Um, but I, from what I heard, it's going to be a great venue. Would it be slightly different to when the Open was there, obviously? Just a normal field on the links, but was there still that, did he still get a kind of full there and kind of, some of the shots from last year or yeah, we uh, we teed off at five o'clock, so obviously it was pretty late, and um, we got to sixteen at nine thirty because it was basically waiting every shot because it was very packed out there. It was the Sunday before the men's open, um, 
So yeah, so when it was two groups on 16, we decided to walk in. So I never played 16, 17, and 18. Um, but it's always, ever since I uh, played there in 2011, it's always been one of my favorite courses in the world. Um, but yeah, just coming back there, I hadn't touched my club for like two uh for good two weeks before that because i'd been back in sweden um but i actually played pretty well but i think it's just because I, that place just has so many good memories for me i mean i just very grateful i'm still feel like i'm pinching myself that i pulled through last year to win the open um it is a childhood dream for me. Um, I think as a European golfer, it's the it's the championship that we all want want to contend in or do well in, and to go and to go and win it. It still feels pretty surreal. Um, so I'm just, I mean, just teeing it up as the defending champion. I think that's you know it's something that I'm very proud of, and no one can take that away from me. And you know, I'm just gonna go in and enjoy it. Um, we'll go to the Zoom, Beth Ann. Do you want to meet your mic? Yes. Hello. Hello. I wanted to ask you just what your favorite part of the celebration of champions was at the old course. Yeah. Be, um, so I got invited about two weeks earlier um, before it happened uh, to come play. And it was uh, it was a really cool experience. Uh, I'd never been to ma men's major before. And um, just having the, the VIP access, uh, getting to go inside the ropes and to play dining, I felt very uncomfortable because uh, I felt like so out of place. But um, we don't get to see the guys a lot. Um, so it was nice to catch up with, uh, with a lot of the guys that I know and just see them. And um, I got to play with uh, Colin Morikawa. Um, what a great guy. Um, so it was just cool to see um you know see them up front and it was such a cool atmosphere because it was a lot of people at St. Andrews that day and do you still have a wedding celebration coming up I do have a wedding coming up in about two weeks and and is it sorry for just the demographics is it close to uh Carnoustie or how, how far away is it yeah so my husband's born in Dundee uh so it would be very close to Dundee and uh, Carnoustie and it would be the week after the British Open so uh, my mind is a little bit everywhere at the moment uh but we've been planning this thing since um what December 2018 when we got engaged so been postponed two years because of COVID so obviously very excited um i've had my dress for a good almost three years now so i hope it still fits in two weeks so i gotta lay off the candy here <laughs> and and last question on that how many people are coming to celebrate with you uh we're gonna be about probably 85 people so a lot of people decided not to come because it's just being a little bit harder to travel but our our nearest and dearest friends and families are going to be there so i'm just very excited to get the uh, spend the day with them. Very cool. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sorry to change the subject slightly. Molly, the, the, the LPGA commissioner, said at the last week that, that she would talk to Greg Norman and Lib Golf if, if they wanted to talk. What's your views on that? Do you think that's something that, that obviously you've got the, the Saudi connection to the Ramco? Is that something that you would encourage her to do? Or what's the player's perspective on that? Well, I feel like there's just so much speculation and media and everyone's talking and writing and speaking about it and assuming things. So I've just been too busy, like focusing on, you know, all the majors and preparing for my wedding and getting my dog over to the skull. And so I just feel like there's just too much talk about it. And I think we're just going to have to see what happens. Um, Aramco has done a lot of great things for the latest European tour with the Aramco team series. Um, and, you know, I feel like women's golf and men's golf is just so different places. So, you know, I'm just excited to see the women's game in general uh, growing and, you know, coming to great venues, come playing in the Muirfield this year. Um, you know, a lot of our majors, um, the AIG Women's Open, the US Open, um, Evian and KPMG all have significant purse increases this year. Um, and I think that's huge for the women's game. So at the end of the day, I think we're all 
you know, being part of the women's game, I'm just excited to see, you know, more uh, players having more opportunities because uh, there's so much good talent on both the latest UMP tour and the LPGA. Just a couple more for me. We'll wrap this up. Um, oh, yeah, let me yeah. Well, you also, no, you go for it. You go. Okay. Um, Anna, being married to a Scot, what Scottish things have you picked up? You know, what do you do that's more Scottish now? Scandinavian. <laughs> um, well, I would say I think um, you know the culture is very similar. I think us living in the U.S. and and being married to like just an European in general, I think the culture and the the values and uh, stuff like that is is very similar. I've uh, I probably know all the bad words in Scottish in the Scottish language. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, both from him and my, from my caddy that I see every day. So, um, they, I mean, it's a fantastic country. I've obviously had the opportunity to come here even before we started dating and playing golf, but just seeing, I feel like seeing Scotland, you know, through the locals eyes, it is a little bit different than just coming here for golf. And I really embrace that opportunity. Um, our dog is here for the summer. So I certainly enjoying a little bit of fresh air, um, but people are very nice. I love the food. Um, oh, you like a good Scottish diet. Do you? I love fish and chips. So now I can't eat fish and chips anywhere but here. Um, they have a lot of good candy here too. Uh, but just in general, like I feel like it's I like the simplicity of, of things, and uh, I love the golf courses, and you know the nature is is beautiful. Um, you know you have a good Scottish day with like good weather like we had the last two days and I don't think there's much that can beat it and I'll ask one more just about Max um how much uh, or how is how difficult has it been to travel with him over uh, over a year and who's he staying with this week uh yeah so uh Max our dog uh, wasn't allowed to come stay at, stay on site this week um I feel like I've or it was a few ladies in the media center that were going to start a protest. <laughs> uh, and I probably would have gotten a lot of names signed on because a lot, everyone wants to see him. But he uh, is with my uh, parents-in-law um, outside Dundee um, for the summer, um, enjoying the Scottish weather and good food and good walkies with grandma. So, um, yeah, I got to see him on Monday night and I hadn't seen him in two weeks. And, um, you know, I was never a dog person wouldn't look at a dog's place but he's a little mama's boy so I must have done something right and it's certainly you know the best feeling coming back from the golf course and him being so excited to see him see you he's an English cream retriever so basically a golden retriever but a white ones but uh, yeah it's been you know I feel like it's been a nice balance you know I probably wouldn't get a dog maybe my first year on tour but um it's just been very nice to have a little bit more balance and you know you come off the golf course and you don't think about golf uh because you have him there he's a very good boy we wish his mom the best of luck this oh, thank, thank you, you so much <laughs> thank you so much